Tag and Gokwe wants out. He's wanted out. He's changed agents. And at this point, there's nothing you can do to get a long-term contract from the Jaguars or anyone else. Now, there's trade chatter that's emerging as it relates to Ngakwe, who has still yet to sign his franchise tender. This went down last year with Jadavian Clowney and the Texans, and it was right before the start of the regular season that Clowney was traded from the Texans to the Seahawks. But the Seahawks ended up paying a big chunk of his salary along with the Texans last year. The Texans had to pay like $7 million yeah. to get this guy off the books. Right. And I don't think the Jaguars are willing to do that. So the the uh, Seahawks ended up giving up a second-round pick or a third-round pick. It was a third-round pick and a couple of players, Jacob Martin and Berkevious Mingo, to get Jadavian Clowney with the Texans paying a large chunk of the salary with that third-round pick. And look, Jadavian Clowney, all, all due respect to Yannick Ngakwe, a healthy uh, Jadavian Clowney is at a higher level or two than Ngakwe. And look at how that went down. I, and this talk of a trade, it, folks, it's not easy to accomplish at this point, in large part because the team that gets Yannick Ngakwe cannot sign him to a long-term contract until after the regular season. And if you don't sign him to a long-term contract, you got to give him a 20% raise over this year's franchise tag to squat on him next year when the salary cap may only be $175 million. It's just not an attractive deal unless the Jaguars are basically giving him away, Chris. Yeah, no, I, I, it's not. You know, they're, they're, you're in a tough spot because – you know, the, the times we've seen the, you know, franchise tag, you know, do that, make a deal and trade. We saw D Clark, you know, D Ford, Frank Clark. We saw that happen, you know, last off season, Right. But those were especially D Ford. It happened early on in the off season. I mean, I want to say, I believe he was franchise tagged. And then like a week later was traded to the San Francisco 49ers. And then Frank Clark, I believe was a little bit after that, but that was still in a time where teams were still trying to formulate their rosters and all that. Now, this was a different offseason because of COVID and everything like that. And I think people were tight with the money and not sure what to do or how to play this whole thing out and what was going to happen. So that time, you know, came and went. And now here we are, you're right, to where it's too late. You know, and I posed to you before we start the show, I said, could they rescind the franchise tag in any way, but but that wouldn't make sense either because I would figure that would probably be what you would do, but then he would be a free agent too, so then he could sign with anybody, so I guess you can't do that. But, yeah, they're stuck here. And, like, you know, I see people online too, Mike. I mean, I think your point is amazing, and I do think people forget it. I forgot about it a little bit to a degree. Like, oh, yeah, damn, if you trade for him, you can't have him do a long-term deal. That's very risky. That totally kills his trade value, like totally kills it. To where, yes, you said it, he's not Jadeveon Clowney. And I would think unless Jacksonville wants to pony up paying some of that money, there's no way they're going to get anything better than a third-round pick at the very best, right? That, that, that's the way at least I look at it because I think that deal last year, what we saw, will be something, you know, as far as a bar that's set with this type of situation. Nineteen point three one six million is the salary that you inherit for Yannick Ngakwe this year, and with no ability to sign him to a long-term contract, what you are looking at after the season is a long-term deal with a starting point of twenty-three point one eight million in a year where the salary cap may be one hundred and seventy-five million. So it's a one-year rental of Yannick Ngakwe. With that said, what are you giving up? for a one-year $19.316 million rental of Yannick Ngakwe. I don't think you're giving up a second-round pick, Chris, and that's the no. the selection that's been thrown around out there. No, you're not, I mean, Mike. if all the Seahawks did was give up a three, right. and they didn't even have to pay, pay the full, full salary, rate, they paid right. half the salary, right? Right. So if you're paying the 19-3, uh, you're, you're giving up well, – I don't. I, look, it, it becomes – it becomes something so low that the Jaguars have Might no not reason do it. to do it. Yeah. And, if they, and if they rescind the tender, here's the thing. Yeah. Remember when the Panthers rescinded the tender Josh from Norman. Josh Norman? Right. They did it just before that window where you, you still get a compensatory draft pick if a guy leaves as a free agent. So gotcha. That's the downside for the Jaguars. Yeah. At this point, if they rescind that tender, and, and I may have to go back and confirm this, but again, the fact that the Panthers did it when they did it suggests that there is that that deadline does apply to the franchise tag that if you rescind it now and he signs somewhere else you don't get a compensatory pick next year that's a factor in this the Jaguars have shown no inclination 
to trade Yannick Ngakwe, just like they showed no inclination to trade Jalen Ramsey. But what happened? They got offered two ones and a four. Yeah. That changes your mind. They've never been offered anything that would change their mind about Yannick Ngakwe. And I think they believe when push comes to shove, he's going to show up and collect his $19.3 million. But Chris, you raise a good point. Maybe they wake up one day and they say, you know what? With the pandemic, no fans this year, maybe we'd rather keep that $19.3 million. Maybe we'd rather keep that cap space and roll it to next year. Maybe we don't want a guy who doesn't want to be here and we'll just rip the Band-Aid off and let him walk away, and there's still a chance that could happen in theory. I don't know that it will. Yeah. There's still a chance that it could. Yeah, no. It, you know, and, and then who's going to pay him? And then well, who's going to pay him 19 3 on that, the open market? That, that, yeah, exact, that's exactly it, too. You know, And, and you know, right, right now we're in a, in a spot where – yeah, I don't think there's going to be a lot of clamoring for him, you know, especially for what we've said so far, you know, with the, the whole franchise and not being able to sign him to a long-term deal. But, again, most teams, yeah, I'm sure there's interest, but most teams are kind of set. So, I think, you know, he is a guy that's – it's going to take a team to look at their roster here over the next 10 days and go, damn, we really need to do something about our defensive ends or whatever that may be. You know, and, and I don't know where that goes. Listen, I, I look at a team just to throw a team at like Seattle. I, I still look at them and go, I don't know why. I just feel like they're going to get involved in this conversation and maybe try to pull off like a Jadeveon Clowney type deal again and just go the hell with it. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we do it. You know, I've heard the Raiders name involved in Yannick and Gakwe talk, but nothing like substantial enough to, to think, ooh, it's getting close or anything like that. But, you know, after that, I, I don't know where he ends up and uh, it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.